as you can see, maybe you didn't see, but if you were here at the previous show, this is uh, one of our labs here at Stillwater Designs. This is actually where Wade does a lot of product testing and verification QA, QC uh, every day throughout the week to make sure our products are meeting standard. So we're actually set up here in the lab, as you can see, and on the wall, I'm going to hope Tim can uh, roll over there with the camera and get us a shot. You see there's three plugs on the wall. Now last uh, week, or two weeks ago when we were in here for testing, we actually used Wade's Astron stack that was over on the side. We had about 350 amps of current that was at our disposal. Those three plugs you see there are 240 volt plugs each, and then right underneath that you'll see it plugged in. Those are three power supplies that we're gonna go harken back to the old Warhorse days. And those power supplies we actually had specially built for us so that we could have enough current in-house to actually test the original Warhorse amplifier. And those amplifiers are capable of 300 amps-ish, probably a little bit more than that each. So we're gonna be able to turn all three of those on. That'll give us 900 plus amps on tap. And then to the side there, we've got a couple of kinetic uh, batteries on tap as well. So we have, we have plenty of power, plenty of current here. We can run a whole lot more amplifier uh, than we've got set up here on the test bench. And hopefully, as you can see, pan down a little bit there, showed the resistor load. On the show we did the first one, I think some people saw this sitting under the bench and thought it was an amplifier. This is actually load banks. These are the fixed resistors that we use to test amplifiers with. And this is a special load bank. It's actually on a rolling cart, so we can take it from lab to lab. And with the knife switches that are on top, we can set this up for any type of impedance that we want to have. And right now we've got it set up into two ohm operation mode. So this is taking the place of what a speaker would be if this amplifier was hooked up to it. So we don't want a speaker making a bunch of noise, we're just gonna play into a fixed load and that's what this is, is two, two ohm, very large fixed resistor banks. And that is up here and that's connected to, sorry I'm looking at what I'm doing, not the camera, but we've got two KXA 2400 amplifiers. And the way we've set this up, because we wanna stress one aught wire, what we've got is over here coming off of the power supplies, we have a huge Anderson connector. This is so we can plug and unplug the different wire that we're doing. We come off that Anderson connector into ours, we're going through 20 feet of power and ground, and then we're coming up here to the table, and we've got two distribution blocks. The power goes into one, the ground goes into the other, and then it splits out of those with two, or excuse me, four two-foot sections of 100% one-aught uh, kicker uh, OFC wire. So out of the distribution block to each amplifier is two feet of one-aught pure copper wire. So the test that you'll see is we have a, an amp meter set up here and we have a volt meter. So we're going to look at amperage and voltage coming up to the distribution blocks and we're actually feeding two KXA 2400 watt amplifiers off of one strand of one aught wire. Now I will preface this with no, this is not something you should ever, ever, ever do in your own installation in your own car. If you had a KXA 2400 watt amplifier or an amplifier of equivalent size, you should be feeding that single amplifier with a single strand of one aught wire. You should not be doing this at all. But this is how we can stress test the wire and we can show you the capabilities, the full capabilities of copper versus a CCA wire. So Derek, do you have any questions on that? I mean, obviously you're in the feed there. I see you're down the bottom box. Yeah, no, this looks good, Kip. Um, been in that room before. A very impressive power supply set up there. I'm really jealous, and I'm really excited to see what you're going to do here. Uh, I'm excited to see it happen, too. Now, I will say, like we said over in the studio, we might smoke an amplifier. And if we do, folks, we're just going to have to move on down the highway, and we'll get it repaired, and we'll do this testing again, because this is a very hard test on an amplifier. Just, just keep that in mind. Now I do have my phone here. I brought it along with me because what I'm going to use it for is I'm going to use the, uh, the stopwatch in it because I do want to keep the test at about 90 or three minutes, about three minutes. So we got a consistent test. So I've got my stopwatch phone here that I'm going to be using for testing. We have the amplifier set up. You know what we've got for power. We have the uh, meter set up so we can look at current and we can look at voltage. And then we have two SMD amplifier. These are the AMM1 uh, meters that will measure wattage output of the amplifier. The reason there's two is we have two amplifiers and you'll be able to see right on here the power output of both amplifiers as we ramp up. And then we have a tone generator right here and this is playing a 50 hertz tone and it's feeding it into the input of both amplifiers. So I, th I think I've got everything covered here as far as what we've got set up for testing. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to walk around there and I'm going to fire up the power supplies and bring the batteries online. And the first one we've got set up here is we've got the uh, 20 foot uh, 
power ground of the Kicker 1-aught cable that we're going to test first. And then, so I'll turn the amplifiers on. I'll turn the power supplies on. I'll come back around here. The amplifiers will turn on when the power supply comes on. And then I'll start ramping up the tone generator and we'll let this test run. And what we're going to look at is power output. We can see current draw. And then we also have our trusty measurement device here. This is one of those handheld infrared uh, contactless readers. And so we can measure temperature of the amplifier and more importantly, we can look at temperature of the cable. So does this look Big D approved? I approve. Only thing we're missing right. is the FLIR, but we'll get that for next time. <laughs> You know what's funny about that? They have a FLIR up in the lab, and I should have borrowed it, and I didn't. So I apologize okay. for that. Again, we, we've got to leave them a little bit for next time. Kip. Can't <laughs> give them everything this time, right? Okay. okay. I'm with you on that. But, we, you know, obviously the stuff that you do with your FLIR, I think, is pretty impressive, showing all that different temperature and where things get hot and where they don't. I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so power supplies are on. Batteries are online. You should see the amplifiers powered up. Power, 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 power. Oh, I'm not plugged in. Where am I plugged in? Okay, I'm plugged in. For some reason I'm not getting a reading here. Let me see, oh, because it's, it's on AC, duh. That's why, there we go. Okay, so, gotta make sure you put the fluke in the right position. So I'm off camera here and hopefully you guys can see. So we've got, right now, if you look at this meter right here at the far left, this fluke, the way this works, this is a clamp probe that's on here and it reads into here. So that means it's pulling three amps of current right now. And so you'll be able to see the actual current draw through the wire. It'll count up here on this display. This is the voltage coming in. This is the power output of each amplifier. And I'm gonna start ramping up the signal. So here we go. Kip, let me know when you want me to start the stopwatch because I'll start mine too. Are you, go okay, it. good. Uh, I'm ramping up power now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start mine. Uh, the meter's turned off. Let me turn them back on. Unfortunately, hold on a second. Okay, real-time power. There we go. So as you can see right now, there's 536 watts coming out of the KXA 2400 on the left, and there's 532 watts coming out of the KXA on the right. So we're pretty close there as far as having these gain match. That's pretty good. So I'm gonna start ramping up. Okay, there's 2389 watts out of the one on the left, 2433, I'm gonna go up a little bit more. That's that squeaky Looking sound the, I was talking about. There you go. Okay, so 24, okay, there's clip. So I'm gonna back it down just a little bit and leave it there. So we've got 2400 and it's very between 2390, 2427. Of course, it's gonna bounce around. On the amp on the left, we got 2460, 2497, bouncing around the right. So hopefully you can see the test running. I know we got a little, a little start, a little slow start there. So my stopwatch is not completely accurate. We'll give it another 30 seconds, but I've been a minute 20 on that test. And if you can see, both amplifiers are still made. And we're going to understand, this is going over one piece of one aught wire. And if you remember that chart we showed in the room there, we are well beyond the spec because if you look at current draw right here, we're pulling 512 amps of current through that wire. 512, 513. And so to give you an idea on temperature, we're at, I got a minute 44. I don't, you may have a little bit less than I do there, Derek. I'm gonna do a temperature test back here. So, on the power wire here, I'll show it the camera. We're at 78 degrees. I don't know if Tim can get that full into view, but the power wire right now, we're at 78 degrees. So really room temperature. I mean, we're not. So there, we're at, we're at 80 degrees right now. I'll pull up here a little quick. So right now we're at 80 degrees. We're still 2,500 watts out of the amp on the right, 2,460, 2,470 out of the amp on the left. We're at two, I've got 227 on my timer. What do you got there, Derek? Yeah, I'm right at it. We're right at the same time. Okay, I'm gonna let it keep going. I, I do wanna do a full three minute test here. Okay, so here we're at the wire. We're up to 106. As far as temp on the wire, I'm at 106 right now. 
and we are still making 2,550 watts here. We're making 2,470, 2,480. We're still making full output power from the amplifiers. Uh, as far as amplifier temperature, one on the right, we're up to 139 degrees. And I'm just showing that it's really, we're talking about the wire, but I figured you guys would like to see the amplifier. Amplifier on the left, we're at 140 degrees. And we're pulling 533 amps of current on the amp meter you can see here. And you'll notice the voltage has dropped down to 12.82. What you're seeing happen right here is as the voltage, the voltage is dropping because the wire is getting hot. And because the wire is getting hot, the amplifiers, these are semi-regulated amplifiers, they're going to start pulling more current in an effort to keep making that full power. So you notice we start, started a little over 500 amps, now we're up to 534 amps because our voltage has dropped to 12.78. We're at 3 minutes and 47 seconds according to my timer. I'm going to come yep. back here and check the wire again. Yes. Yeah, you're solid 3 minutes, Kip. Okay. You hear me okay? Did I lose you? No, no, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I'm just saying you, you've got a solid three minutes of the amp at full volume. So I'm going to bring that down now. Yeah, because I'm at 410 on mine. I know we got a slow start, so I'm going to pull that down. Because I do want to give the amplifiers a second to cool here. Maybe we can answer some questions or look at some stuff. But that was a, a definitely a solid three minute plus run right there of making full power out of these amplifiers. And I'm going to come around here to the cable. And the cable is, I mean, it's warm. I mean, I'm not going to lie, the cable's warm. Uh, so I don't know if you can see that. The cable, I'm at 138 and a half degrees on that cable. And the thing you got to keep in mind, let me take another measurement here. There's a, there's a reading, another one, I got 148. I've, I've taken readings a couple different spots on the cables to try to get an idea what kind of temperature we're looking at here. Hey Kip. Yes. Why don't you check the temperature on those low resistors? Sure. Good call, Ernie. That's load resistors right there. We need a piece of cheese. <laughs> we could grill some grilled cheese sandwiches on that pretty good. I don't really want to reach down there and touch it, but I can tell you it's hot. That's 153 on that load resistor. Let me check the other side. 159.4 on the other side. So the point to this test, I guess what we're trying to show is, first off, understand we are well beyond spec here. You should not be running 4,800 watts of power through a single one aught CCA or a single one aught OFC. It's not designed for that. And any wire, all wire, as you pull current or voltage and current through it and you start getting to its capacity and go beyond it, the wire starts getting hot. As the wire starts getting hot, it adds more resistance to the of uh, whatever's pulling it, whether it's a light bulb or an amplifier pulling current and voltage through that wire, and you just get into this cycle where you keep pulling more, the wire gets hotter, the wire gets hotter, it takes more to pull through that, and that's how you see the voltage drop, you see the current climb, and you see that with our amplifiers, because these are loosely regulated amplifiers, they, they do whatever they can to just try to make power. And so that's what you're seeing going on here. So we are way out of spec, but the fact is we ran two of these amplifiers for a solid three minutes. I mean, according to my stopwatch, I know we got a little slow start there, but I got four minutes and 24 seconds on mine. So I'm gonna say a good solid four minutes we got in there on full power. And the one aught copper wire did it. Would you want to do this in a real-world application? Absolutely not. But we're showing you that there's a lot of headroom and there's a lot of capability in one aught wire. So one aught wire is perfectly fine for running a single one of these amplifiers. Now, I'm going to go back there and I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to have to shut this down, turn off the power, and I'm going to disconnect the cables and I'm going to switch this over to the one aught CCA. So if you've got anything to add, Derek, feel free to inter interject anything you want right here. Well, there you have it. I'm impressed once again with the amplifiers running full volume for four minutes. Uh, and Kip being able to do this live is, is impressive as well. It's easy to go back and edit things and make things better after the fact. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's just showing you what faith they have in their product that they'll actually continue to put out the power 
for four minutes solid. And you know, Kip, with that particular <laughs> test, it, it's such an extreme test that people, when they're listening to music, I mean, that's like running your your system at full volume for what? Uh, two or three days solid? That's about an equivalent mm-hmm. test of what you just did? Yeah, I mean, it would be a quite a long time. We What we do, and we talked about this on your 12-volt talk episode show, is we do this uh, full power test on our amplifiers, and then they have to go through a 24-hour durability test back on the, the test bench that we showed you. And maybe on a future show, we'll go back and actually show that again, although it's in a couple of the tour videos that you and Dean have done. But those amplifiers go back there, and they have to run from cold. So an amplifier is cold with no temperature on it. It has to go from start and run at a 10 dB overlap from full output. Now, that can be a tricky thing to answer because different amplifiers have different output capability and different gain stages, but basically 10 dB of overlap is gonna equate to somewhere between 20 and 40% THD. So we're basically running this amplifier completely into garbage land. And that amplifier has to run there for a solid 45 minutes before it's first thermal. And that's what our protection circuits are designed to do. I mean, our goal is it's gonna run for a minimum of 45 minutes before thermal kicks in. And then when thermal kicks in, it turns the amplifier off, the temperature has to roll back. And then when the temperature rolls back, and I think it's 10 degrees, once the temperature falls back 10 degrees from thermal, it'll let the amplifier come back on. And the amp, now, for once it reaches that temperature, it doesn't mean it's gonna run another 45 minutes, but it has to run for a minimum of 45 minutes the first time. And then it has to run for 24 hours cooking itself on off on off on off so it has to pass both those tests the first 45 minutes and then cook itself for 24 hours for it to pass our design standards so we think we have some pretty tough standards that go by i would agree with that i'm gonna look at some of the comments here and see if anybody has any yeah please do questions yeah gas man three learn something new every show which is agreed i learn something new every show as well You know, what's cool about this is we really, you know, all of us work for kickers. So, yeah, are we kicker fanatics? Yeah, every single one of us here are kicker fanatics or we wouldn't be here. But we're also audio enthusiasts. And so what we hope is that this isn't just an infomercial for our product. We really want to talk about the science behind wire, the science behind speakers, the science behind amplifiers. You know, talk about all that stuff. And then where we can show that we feel we make a great product. Yeah, we're going to take the opportunity. We're going to we're going to toot our own horn. Of course we are. But understand this test we're showing you, you could put any brand of amplifier in place these kickers you want and you're going to get the same results. As long as they make 2,400 watts of power, you're going to get these same results. So it's not just about the brand amps. It's about the science of the wires that we're talking about. So keep that in mind. As long as they can do it for three minutes. Solid. True. I'm just saying. <laughs> True. We, we don't know so, about that. So hopefully Tim's been watching this on the camera. You can see. So what I did is I disconnected the one aught. Uh, copper and set it off to the side and of course it uses that big blue Anderson connector. I've plugged in another Anderson connector that's connected to this CCA wire and so now I'm just going to, all I'm doing is swapping out the copper from the blocks for CCA in the blocks. And, and I know this is probably boring to watch, but we really wanted to do all this live because, and I'm glad you said what you said, Derek, is we're not hiding stuff here. There's no hokey pokey. If an amp goes up in smoke or something happens, we want everyone to see all this stuff happening live. We're not trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes, and we're sincere about that. Hey, Kip, how light is that CCA compared to the uh, OFC? This, I could pick up this roll of CCA and probably throw it to the moon compared to the copper. It's extremely light. Uh, I don't want to go out on a limb and give an exact measurement, but I, I would guess, speculate, just picking it up, this is anywhere from a third to a fourth the weight of the copper wire that it's connected. It's extremely light. Um, extremely light. Yeah, and I think Rob gave that example before that a lot of cases uh, the OFC wire, which is 10, can actually look like CCA. So some people can think that they're actually getting the wrong kind of wire, but the way to know is is the weight, for sure. If yes. you weigh it or if you just pick it up, you can tell the copper wire is much heavier than the CCA. You know, and the other, the opposite of that kind of happens for us, Derek, which is ironic, is our 100% copper, all of our wire is tin plated and has been from the, other than our value kits. Our value kits are not tin plated, but if you get into our PK uh, kits or you get into our marine kits, we use all tin plated 
copper. And the reason we do that is for corrosion resistance, whether it's under the hood of a car or in a marine environment, freshwater or saltwater, tin plated copper is a necessity on saltwater marine. I mean, if you don't use tin plated copper, it will eat itself up from the saltwater, that environment. So all of our wire is extremely durable under the hood if you look at the PK or the marine kits because it's that tin plated copper. So when people look at the outside of ours, they say, oh, that's aluminum. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> look, cut the end and look at the end. It's copper and then it's got a very thin tin plating over it for corrosion resistance. Chip, I see some questions about the KXA2400. People are asking if they're coming back. Are, you, are we having some stock issues on the 2400s? Here's what I think we're far enough along that I can, I can kind of give you that patented KIP wink and I can say this. The KXA amplifiers are end of life. And there was supposed to be a new line of amplifiers to take the place of the KX amplifiers at the beginning of the year. And, and I'm not making excuses, I'm just stating reality. And trust me, we do everything we can to work through this. But the last 12 to 18 months with the pandemic, the slowdown in manufacturing, uh, uh, chip plants that have literally caught on fire and burned to the ground, uh, container ships coming across the ocean that have literally, literally lost thousands of containers into the bottom of the ocean. Those are all realities as a manufacturer we're dealing with. So the replacement amplifiers for the KX are just behind, but they will be coming. And if, if you like KX, you're gonna love what's coming to replace it. It's, they are, and, and when we're ready, we're, we're, we're just a little too far out to do it, but when we're ready to let the cat out of the bag, we will do a unmasked live event, uh, and we'll probably do it on a Tuesday, or we may pick another day of the week, but we will do an event where we're gonna show everyone those and some other cool new products that would be coming that we would have normally showed at CES, but of course that show was canceled, and it's just, everything is just slowed down. It's taken us longer to get things done, but we're working as fast as we can. So unfortunately, these are end of life amplifiers. They're great amplifiers. I mean, if you can find one, I'd buy it and use it. They're great amps, but yes, there's a replacement coming, and we'll talk about it on the show when we can. See, once again, we learned something together here, because I didn't know that, so <laughs> that's why I like being involved in these, because I can be just like you guys in the audience, but I'm actually here in person. Hope to see my ugly bald hopeful. head. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, hope, hopefully come tomorrow. I don't find a pink slip on my desk because I let that little bit of information out. But you guys are tuning into the show. We kind of feel like you're special guests. And so I feel comfortable enough. I know where we're at in the project development that I can let you know. These are into life. And yes, there's a replacement coming and they're going to be awesome. Yeah, somebody mentioned already anyway in Crutchfield, it says that there, it's a discontinued item. So I think it's already kind of well known. Yes. So it just, trust me, we feel bad as a brand. We feel bad for our de dealers and distributors because we don't have the replacement ready, but we are doing everything we can to get it there. And without making an excuse, because I don't want it to sound that way at all, the, uh, the you know, these amplifiers, a lot of people don't know this, is the KX amplifiers, these actually have a DSP in them. So when you look at a KX amplifier, even though you see all these knobs on the front that you can turn and switch as you can set for the controls, what you're doing here, you're simply talking to a computer that tells the DSP what to do. So it's, it's analog convenience, but DSP precision. So these have a DSP in them. So everything, the crossover point, the gain control, all that stuff is done in a DSP. The new ones are gonna do the same thing and even some more cool stuff that I can't talk about yet. But there was literally a chip manufacturer that makes DSPs and microcontrollers and things. And if you, if you wanna see something interesting, go look at why Ford has over 10,000 trucks parked over at the Kentucky Speedway. It's because Ford can't even get the microprocessors and DSPs and chips they need to build the computers to go into these trucks to finish them to make them sellable. So it's, it's a global issue. It's not just for car audio, it, it's everything. And so um, that's really one of the reasons why we're having such a big holdup is these new amplifiers use that chip. But we were able to source some and so when they come, you're gonna love them. Exciting. It is exciting. They are gonna, and they, uh, you know how you are about VU meters, Derek? Yes. Okay, I'll tell you straight up, there's no VU meters. Oh, but, well. Hey, that, that's version three. Yeah. You know, we can always kind of want it. Leave some of the cats in the bag. Do what? Leave some of the cats in the bag. <laughs> there you What's, go. I can't, it's VU meter. I mean, I can talk about VU meters with Derek. It's, it's his thing. You know, I've got to talk to Tony. The only thing I don't like about the AMM1 is it doesn't stay on more than, what, 90 seconds, I'm thinking. It shuts off uh, if it's yeah. not doing anything. 
And that's the preserve yeah, I would the battery like for it because be a, it, it eats batteries for lunch. It does. It does. I'll tell you what, I, uh, uh, Steve Mead, he reached out, or I reached out to him, and he helped me on these meters. And the, he, uh, it's called a Tenergy is the brand, but it's a 9-volt uh, nickel metal hydride rechargeable. And I get pretty good battery life out of those as opposed to any alkaline battery you can get. So I've been using those in these, and I, get, I do get more life out of them than an alkaline. Okay, so here's where we're at. Turn this off, get this going. So here, here's our amp meter, here's our voltage, we've got our clamp on, we got our two SMD meters up ready to read power. So are you ready to start your timer? I'm ready, you tell me when. Okay, I'm gonna start climbing power now, so go. Okay, we're at 1300 watts on the left, 1300 watts on the right. Okay, I don't know if you just noticed, but both amplifiers just shut off. Did you shut see off. it? Yeah, sure did. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn them down a little bit so we can get there, so they'll stay on. So I'm at 1,850 watts on the left. I'm at 1,850-ish watts. It's bouncing back and forth like they do. I'm at 13 volts, and you can see I'm pulling 365 amps of current. So you noticed over the one aught copper, we were able to pull 530 plus amps of current through it. It powered the amplifiers, and yes, it was getting warm, but it let both amplifiers make full power. I'm here, I'm gonna see if I can go up one more click. Okay, so there I'm at 1900 on the right, I'm at ni almost 2000, 1980, there's 2000, there's 19 some change, so I'm at 2000 watts per amplifier. I'm drawing 429 amps through the wire, I'm down to 12.3 volts, and I'm just gonna go ahead, just out of curiosity, I'm gonna take a reading back here. Okay, it's getting warm. I'll see if I can get any more power out of the amplifiers. Shuts right off, so I'm gonna back it down one click. Let them kick back over. Do those come out of protection automatically, Kip, or do you have to power cycle Yes. Them? They should come out of protection automatically unless the only time on these is it is possible on the KX line because it's a DSP chip is sometimes you do have to remove power and bring them back if they're into a funky shutdown protection mode, which they might be right now. That's why I'm looking here. I'm just gonna roll my, see if they'll come back. Okay, there we go. I got them to come back when I remove signal completely. So, I think the one on the left is still in protect. Oh, there it goes. It actually, it started pulling so much current, it actually put one of my power supplies into protect out of the power supply. So I'm gonna reset it. There we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, so we're back. So this funky stuff you see happening, you notice it didn't happen when we were using copper. <laughs> which kind of ties back to the same thing we talked about on the show previously, is a lot of times when we have people call in and speak to our amp repair department or have a warranty issue on their amplifier, there's the majority of the times we chase it down, it's a wire issue, it's a power supply issue because a lot of people are running CCA wire and the worst part is they're like, okay, well, yeah, you said I need one out, but I can use four gauge and I can get four gauge CCA and man, I'll be great. And so you're literally starving the amplifier for current and putting it into situations where it shuts down. So now that I got the power supplies back, I'll ramp this back up. So here we are, I'll get up to. Okay. I'm at 2,000 watts in amplifier. Yeah, I started my oh, over, Kip. Oh, thank you, yes. Thank you for doing that, I appreciate that, man. So we're, at, and I'm gonna try that, that, I know you may not be able to see it on this scope I'm using, but right at, I'm at 2.6, uh, that's how much voltage I'm driving to the input in the amplifiers, and if I go to 2.7, they'll shut off. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go over here and see if I can bring it up a little bit. So I'm gonna go to 2.61. There's 
and you can see we're down to 11, we're already 11.8 volts. I mean, we are, we're pulling 472 amps of current through the wire and we're down to 11.8 volts. Both amplifiers are making right at 2,060 watts. And the power supply just went into protection. So I'm going to ramp this down again. Reset the power supplies. So I guess what we're so saying here is it's, it's difficult to <laughs> it's difficult to do comparison testing because we're not able to not able to get the amount, same it's, amount of power or the amount of current through the CCA wire. Correct, but I'm gonna I'm gonna give it my best effort here. We're gonna do it again. So we're up and running. I'm gonna run this up. Go back up to 2.6, and there, click, just shut. I'm going to turn down a little bit. Okay, hit my start. So we haven't even been able to get a full three-minute run out of these amplifiers at full power, much less anything else. Over there? Yes. Okay, here. Can you see that? Are you on it? Yep. All right, so what Tim wants you to see there, guys, is I've actually got the input to the amplifiers turned down. Watch as I ramp this back up. Look at what happens to those power wires. Are you ready? Do you see them moving? See them spread apart and they're moving? Poltergeist. <laughs> And it's, yeah, it's getting hot now. I think your, Kip, I think y'all's internet is probably uh, breaking up just a little bit. Your quality has dropped a little bit on the camera. We can still see it, but it's a little bit pixelated. Okay, hopefully it picks back up here. We, we did notice earlier in the show that we were getting poor connection quality to StreamYard, but here, I mean, we're not making full power, and right now we're at 132 degrees on the wire. So hopefully you can see that on the, the temperature meter there. It is running. We're making, uh, oh, this, I got to turn this one back on. Unfortunately, it timed out. So on the amp on the left, we're making 1997. It timed out too. I need to turn it back on. Yeah, that is the one thing. It's meant. You, it's funny you mentioned that. I'd love to talk to Steve about getting some kind of a hold function on these, so they will just stay in a mode. Uh, and then, you know, if the battery goes dead, you know, at least you're responsible for that. Okay, yeah, somebody, power, somebody, in the, uh, somebody in the comment said that the CCA is is connecting to the Wi-Fi. Also, <laughs> <laughs> we're powering the Wi-Fi over CCA. That's awesome. Okay, so. To give you an idea, here's where we're at temperature-wise on that wire. We're up to 160 degrees. Can you see that? Yep. Okay, we're making, um, we're making 2,000 watts on the left and the amplifier on the right has actually went in to protect. So it's probably, it got current starved and probably shut down. I'm going to turn it down one more time. See, that test ran. I, on my stopwatch, I got up to two minutes and 40 seconds there. I don't know what you, if you had something run on your end. Yeah, I was up to, I'm up to 350 now, so. Okay. So 350. So. Here's where we're at. 171 degrees. So I'll try to get another reading. I, I think Go ahead, the Derek. Lesson, the lesson here is kind of like, you know, when you're shopping for an amplifier and, and you purchase an amplifier, you've got to save some of your funds to make sure you get proper wiring because you don't want to spend all of your money on the amp and then ha not have any money to, to pay for your wire because you see what happens here. You're not going to get the power out of it and you're going to have all kinds of issues with it. So. It's difficult because everybody wants the shiny stuff, the amps, you know, the, the speakers, 
the wiring and the accessories is never really a fun thing to have to purchase, but it's one of the necessities. It's kind of like buying some really fancy rims and then getting the off-brand tires and your car rides really bad. You know, you kind of have to make sure you account for so, the things that you really need. Right. And, you know, obviously, we've, we haven't been pulling current over this wire for a few minutes, so it's starting to cool down, but it's still at 100 and 166. There's, I, I missed, I hit it again, but there's 100. We're not even pulling current through it, and we're still it's starting to cool, but we're at 163. Now, I guess the good part is aluminum does cool pretty quick. I mean, current, aluminum is a great... Uh, transfer of heat. I mean, it'll cool down pretty quick, but when you're running amplifiers, I think the key is you're trying to get all the current you can to the amplifiers and get your amplifiers to make power for you. And so that's hopefully, well, let's see if I can get these kick over one more time. Yeah, the amp on the right, we're still, it's it's in thermal protect right now, but yeah, and it's, it's hot. So I'm, I'm pretty sure the amplifier's like, I'm done. I want to have a break. <laughs> what's, what's the temp on the amp, Kip? Let me find the high temp, the high point. Okay, so there's the outputs. Down here's power supply. The amplifier's at 100 and, well, I had a 174, just dropped to 173.8. So the amplifier is 173.8 degrees on the outer shell, um, which means it's probably well over 200 on the inside where the thermistor is that, you know, tracks the temperature and tells the DSP whether to turn it on or turn it off. So I don't know if we'll get, I'm checking the time here. Okay, we're at, we got 10 minutes left before we get to nine. So basically, I don't know that we're gonna get this amplifier to cool down in time to run one more test, but as you can see, the whole premise of this test is we are stressing the wire, but stressing the wire is what lets you see the limitations of the wire. So in this scenario here, we were pulling 4,800 or making 4,800 watts of power, and you could see how much voltage and current we were pulling through the wire. And with the 100% copper, we were able to get both these amplifiers to full power output and make full power for well over three minutes. When we move over to the CCA wire, you can see there were several hiccups in trying to just get, get them up to making power. And then once it got running, you see, we couldn't get the amplifiers over 2000 watts. I mean, that was the maximum we could get out of those amps over that one or that CCA wire. And it got to the point that it was getting hot, hot. Now we could probably, they, hey, the amplifier came back. There it is. It just came out of thermal. We'd probably have to let it sit for another, before I'd want to run it like I just ran, I'd want to let it sit for a minute. But as you can see, well, okay, perfect. So as you can see, the CCA wire is not capable of doing the same thing as the 100% oxygen free copper wire is. I would never, ever, ever in a million years even remotely suggest that you run two of these amplifiers off a single run of one aught in either case, whether it was pure copper or CCA, I would never recommend it. But this was a stress test scenario so that you could see the limitations of the wire. And as you can see, we got, I mean, the amp got the thermal, so we had to wait for it, but you're seeing the copper wire got to 130. Yeah, we can kill, I can kill those. The copper wire got to about a buck 30. Timmy's telling me to turn off the power supply so it's quieter in here. But you can see on the copper, we made full power. Never had any issue with, with the drop. It was pulling all the current it needed. Matter of fact, it started pulling about 30 amps extra current as the voltage was dropping and made full power. And when we moved to the CCA, it couldn't even pull the same amount of current. It got extremely hot. It got up to 100, almost a 180. There's one measure I took there was like a 179. So it was getting very hot. So this is simply the limitation in the wire. Does this mean you shouldn't or couldn't run CCA? No, I'm not saying that at all. But if you wanna run one run of wire within the safe tolerances of what charts and graphs will tell you, you're always gonna be better off to run pure copper. In this scenario here, we would see a totally different result if we ran two runs of CCA. So basically what we're saying is you have to use at least, at least two runs of the CCA to meet the capability of one run of 100% copper. And even two runs, I think over time, you'd see that it's not, it wouldn't uh, be as quick of a test to show this because it's got more surface area, more radiating area, more uh, circular area to pull the current through with two runs of wire versus one. So at the end of the day, are you, are you really saving money or if you go with CCA over copper? When you look at what the performance hit you take, we certainly don't think so, and that's why we don't recommend it. But the flip side of this equation is, we're not here telling you that CCA or aluminum is a bad material. It has its place in all sorts of things as long as you use it and it's designed within its parameters. But as far as a power wire, gauge for gauge being the same capability, absolutely not.